Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Who Ate It First. Uh, quick apology, as you might notice, this is another mini-sode. <laughs> yeah, life's just been a little wild, uh, and we're needing to take a bit longer of a break from our season than we expected. Uh, but we still want to provide you with something, so uh, this is another mini-sode. Um, so, as you know, life gets in the way. Um <laughs> There's been a lot of like weddings, as we've already mentioned. The holidays are going around. They're coming. They're coming fast. Um, Look out. <laughs> and as uh, some of y'all maybe don't know, I'm actually currently unemployed. And that has also taken up a lot of my time. Um, job hunting. Which makes sense. So that's been fun. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Unemployment. Yay. Yay. Yeah. So that is what we've been dealing with. So anyway, we don't want to take up too much of our time talking about that stuff. We want to talk about alcohol. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> In particular, this week, uh, I am going to be going over whiskey. Woohoo! Whiskey is an extremely broad topic, so we could probably honestly do episodes about individual whiskeys themselves. So I'm going to go kind of broad strokes here. And we'll see how it goes. I'm very interested to learn about this because you keep telling me bourbon is a whiskey, but a whiskey isn't a bourbon, and a scotch isn't a whiskey or a bourbon, and a dear da 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 uh, Well, scotch is a whiskey, but oh, Well, yes. excuse the so, heck out of me. <laughs> you're correct about the bourbon part, yeah. Every square is a rectangle, but not all rectangles are... Go I hate the... No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Whis there's a lot that is considered whiskey, um, and we'll get into that in a second. So, whiskey is made from fermented grain mash. Fermentation is the conversion of carbs into alcohol using microorganisms such as yeast. Mm. In case you didn't know what that was. Sounds tasty. And mashing, and uh, we're not talking about mash the TV show here, is a process of combining a mix of ground grains with water and then heating the mixture. This allows the enzymes in the malt to break down the starch in the grain into sugars. Mm -hmm. At which point, then, you know, you have the yeast, and the yeast breaks those sugars into alcohol. Bada bing, bada boom, you got alcohol. <laughs> There's various grains used for whiskey. Um, we'll explore some of those different grains a little bit later. The word whiskey is actually in... Uh, and Anglic Anglicization. Anglicization? Anglicization, which is also cultural assimilation of something non-English into something English. That checks out. <laughs> uh, of the Gaelic word ishka, which means water. The Latin word for distilled alcohol was also known as aqua vitae, which means water of life. And in Gaelic, it is... Ishka Beha. There are also actually two different ways to spell whiskey. Um, the first is W H I S K E Y. The second is the same, but you remove the E, and they are both correct. Well, there's two different schools of thoughts on this. Some believe that it was just regional differences in spelling, and that's kind of how it came about. The other school of thought believes that. The spelling should depend on the style or origin of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So that was just a quick overview, getting into some of the history of whiskey. Before I get into that, um, I do need to briefly talk about distillation. Oh, good. Don't we all? <laughs> so come into my little chemistry corner here, and we're going to talk about uh, distillation. Oh, good. Are you going to add chemical X? Yes. We're about to make the Powerpuff Girls. Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> So distillation is the process of separating components or substances from a liquid mixture by using selective boiling and condensation inside an apparatus called a still. Mm. So as you might remember from chemistry class, liquids, liquids turn into a gas state at different temperatures. Right. I think I got to be in chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, like let's say you have water and alcohol. Just use, Since we're talking about whiskey, we'll use this as an example. Let's, let's say you have water and alcohol, 
in a combined liquid and you have it in the still. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you heat that still and it'll heat at the bottom. Alcohol turns into a gas before water does. So alcohol will uh, Mm -hmm. move up the still in its gas form Mm -hmm. and then it'll kind of go up and over into this tube that's at the top. And while it's in that tube, that tube is um, cooling down that gas. So it's turning it into condensation or back into a liquid. Mm. And it'll pour down that tube, at which point um, you have distilled your alcohol out mm-hmm. of your solution. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So we'll talk a little bit more about that process as well uh, in a bit. So jumping back into my history professor hat. Whew. The earliest distillation methods that we can confirm were by the Greeks in the first century AD, but it wasn't actually for distilling alcohol. Um, Oftentimes this was used for other things like perfumes. Oh. Medieval Arabs eventually adopted these distillation techniques from the Greeks, uh, but it still wasn't actually used for alcohol. Earliest record found of distilling alcohol is actually from the 13th century Italy, where alcohol was distilled from wine. This process was used mostly for medicinal purposes, such as the treatment of colic and smallpox, and was created in medieval monasteries pretty much exclusively. So the monks would take the wine, uh, distill the alcohol, and use it to treat people. I see. The, the monks. The monks. The monks. The monks. The monks. The monk? Oh my gosh <laughs> it's monk monk it's monk from monk it's monk it's monk from monk we constantly fight about <laughs> this the pronunciation of monk <laughs> monk monk it's monk stop <laughs> you're insane <laughs> <laughs> these distillation techniques spread throughout ireland and scotland around the 15th century as did the practice of distilling aqua vitae for medicinal purposes so there you go. Water of life was used for medicinal purposes. That makes a lot of sense. See, does that make vodka? Um, it wasn't vodka. It was just like pretty like, much straight. Just alcohol, straight alcohol. Okay. Basically, yeah. It was a very un. It wasn't diluted, so it would have been a pretty highly concentrated alcohol. Okay. Um, you could probably consider it like a whiskey, um, but not what we would understand as our modern day whiskey. Eventually. Medicinal distillation passed from monasteries to the secular medical practitioners of the the time, notably the Guild of Barber Surgeons. Distillation at this time, what I was just mentioning, wasn't as refined as it is today. So whiskey wasn't aged, so it was pretty raw, potent, and not diluted. Um, So it would be pretty like punchy in your face, like just intense alcohol, (laughs) Uh, because the alcohol content would be quite high. Got it. And it never aged in barrels. Mm. Um, and that's actually where whiskey gets a lot of its flavor um, is the aging process. Mm-hmm. So it would have been, yeah, just, I don't I don't even know how to describe it, honestly, because I've never had anything like that. But yeah, it would have been kind of intense. Mm. <laughs> so. Um, it would be like drinking rubbing alcohol. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> just disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> so during this time, I did look into like when aging started um when they instead of just were taking it straight from the stills and starting to age the wine and found this information off of angel envy's whiskey website (laughs) so i'm assuming it's pretty accurate Um, (laughs) i can only hope (laughs) uh, but they're saying that for a long time whiskey was was stored in barrels but its intended purpose was more about like storing and shipping the whiskey off it wasn't about keeping it in barrels to age it. Mm -hmm. And these barrels were not high quality barrels. They were, or casks, but, and you can use that interchangeably. Uh Um, They were used previously to store other goods such as like fish or just, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, So they weren't very like good quality barrels. Ew, so you could possibly get some fishy leftover flavor? Maybe, I don't really know, but yeah, possibly. I don't know if it would be like a ton because, again, it wouldn't be aging in that barrel for like 12 years. It would just be however long it took to like get it shipped to where it's going. So 12 years. So 12 years. I'm just kidding. (laughs) 
There was the wine blight in France during the mid to late 1800s, and that wiped out a lot of the brandy supplies. Oh. Um, so France started to import Spanish sherry as a replacement for brandy during that time. This caused a lot of the sherry bottle barrels to pile up because once they were used, uh, they kept them there because it wasn't all that cost effective to then ship them back to Spain. Mm. So they just kind of sat around. <laughs> so Scottish distillers took this opportunity to buy those barrels for cheap because they there was a lot of them and they just wanted to get rid of them. So they were able to get them for a good price and they started to use those barrels to store their whiskey as well mm. instead of the worse barrels that they were using before. Got it. And over time, they discovered that the longer the whiskey was in these barrels, like when it was getting shipped off to further and further places, when it got there and people would drink it, um, it tasted pretty good. It tasted <laughs> even better than it was before. So, um, they just, hey, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So they discovered that, you know, kind of through that, we could try aging the whiskeys in these barrels and that will help create a better alcohol. So they decided to start doing that, and this scotch became so popular that the scotch that was aged in sherry barrels actually became more popular than sherry itself in Ooh. Europe. So that's a little bit about some of the earlier history of whiskey. Talking a little bit about the production of it, um, like I mentioned before, a still is usually what is used to make whiskey, and a still is made of copper because it helps remove sulfur-based compounds from the alcohol uh, that would make it unpleasant to, to drink. Modern stills are usually made of stainless steel, but they still have a copper like innards on, on the inside. Mm. There's two common types of stills. There's the pot still, which um, basically has like a big bottom and like a single tube that goes up and over. Mm. Um, it's a single heated chamber and vessel that's used to collect the alcohol, and it can usually get between 40% and 60% ABV, or alcohol by volume. Mm. Ab. Ab. Um, the column still acts like a series of single pot stills um, in a long vertical tube, and this can reach up to a 95% ABV, mm. which is much higher alcohol content. And then, as I mentioned, whiskey is now nowadays are aged in barrels. Um, the interesting thing about whiskey, though, is unlike wine, where wine can get better while it's in the bottle, right? And you might have like a 2003 bottle of wine, right? And it's you consider that aged for like 20 years because it's been in that bottle for 20 years. Mm -hmm. The aging process pretty much stops once whiskey is in the bottle. Mm. Um, you only count how many years it was um, distilled, basically however long it was like in a barrel. Mm. When you find a whiskey that was made 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, it might be a very rare whiskey mm. and it'll probably be expensive because of that rarity. Mm. But that time doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be any better than a whiskey that was made um, like that's a, a newer whiskey, like a 10 year old whiskey. Mm. So I thought that was really interesting mm -hmm. um, because the, the aging happens in the barrel because the whiskey goes uh, undergoes six different chemical processes. It undergoes extraction, evaporation, oxidation, concentration, filtration, and coloration. Ooh, they add color to it? So those are all things that happen naturally in the barrels. Uh -huh. They don't actually do anything to it. Those are all just like six different chemical processes processes that, that happen in the barrel got it because if i remember correctly whiskey straight from the still is actually pretty much clear it's not the dark like amber color that we expect hmm. um, that happens in the barrels hmm. it's then of course bottled up and most whiskey is sold at around 40 percent alcohol content or 80 proof but it can also obviously you can get alcohol that's much higher <laughs> alcohol content than that mm -hmm. um i think the most i've had is like 100 or 110 proof which is like 50 percent to 55 percent alcohol um which i don't much care gets, for those yeah it gets pretty intense um uh, okay 
So gonna just knock out some of the different types and varieties of whiskeys. Uh, there's malt whiskey, which is made from malted barley. Also grain whiskeys, which are made from pretty much any type of grain. You can have single malt whiskeys that are made from a single distillery using one malted grain. Mm. And unless the bottle says single cask, it will also contain whiskeys from many different casks and years so that the blender can achieve a consistent taste. A blended malt whiskey is a mixture of a bunch of different single malt whiskeys into its own bottle. Um, so that might be from like several different distilleries. Gotcha. Um, and then there's also just blended whiskey, which is a mixture of different types of whiskeys. Uh, this usually has a single high quality single malt whiskey uh, and then a bunch of less expensive spirits and other ingredients to help get it down to a lower price also cask strength which is rare and usually only the very best whiskeys ever offer cask strength um these are usually undiluted and will be a very high abv and then the other one the other type that i mentioned was um single cask so uh it's like um single malt whiskey but that's bottled from one single cask they don't use multiple casks to make it um, and in fact, if you find a bottle of single cask, it'll most likely have the numbers of the specific barrel and bottle number um, on on that bottle. Yeah, you probably need to notate that so you can maintain that consistency, like you said. Uh, actually, single cask are probably going to be highly varied in um, how it's fl- how it tastes, because uh, like with the single malt whiskey, you're blending a bunch of different casks together to get a consistent flavor. With this one, you're only using one cask. So oh. it might taste similar um, to like what they're expecting, but every bottle that you get of a single cask is probably going to taste different oh. because that process is just kind of, you know, not guaranteed that it's going to taste the same from cask to cask. Hmm. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about is the varieties of whiskey. I, honestly, nowadays there's a ton, so I'm just going to like cover some of the more popular ones at least what i think are the more popular ones um first off we'll just start with the american whiskeys um there's bourbon which is made from a mash that is 51 percent corn and has to be aged in new charred american white oak barrels fun fact about bourbon as i recently found out is despite what people say you can actually have bourbon not from kentucky oh it doesn't have to come from kentucky to be considered bourbon Dang. So, which is something I didn't know about. I thought uh, that was something that you had to have from Kentucky to be called bourbon, but apparently not. Mm. Uh, There is corn whiskey, which just like um, bourbon is made from corn, but this uses 80% corn uh, in its mash. Uh, And it's usually not aged. Or if it's aged, it's aged in already previously used barrels. Um, You have malt whiskey which is from 51% malted barley, rye whiskey, 51% rye, uh, rye malt whiskey, 51% malted rye, uh, wheat whiskey, 51% wheat. Um, In Canada, um, the requirements to be a Canadian whiskey is it has to be made from a mash of cereal grain aged in wood barrels with a capacity limit of 700 liters and aged for no less than three years. What kind of cereal are we talking? Like Special K or Kellogg's or? Yeah, all of those. I did think this was kind of a funny requirement um, for Canadian whiskey. It also must possess the aroma, taste, and character generally attributed to Canadian whiskey. So if it doesn't have that, whatever that is, because uh, I actually haven't had a Canadian whiskey, I realized while I was doing this, um, I don't know what that is. So. Well, it tastes like Canada, obviously. I guess, yeah. <laughs> when you drink it, you just like... Start You're singing. shot off into a stream of maple syrup. <laughs> you see Justin Trudeau waving at you as you go by. Trudeau! There's a bunch of lumberjacks just cutting down trees. There's they're, a lot of Mounties, and they're just going, hey! And everybody's like, oh, looks like you're oot in a boot, eh? <laughs> and it's just a glorious time. So, and then you get transported back. And Simu Lu is there. See, yeah, Simu Lu is there. And you're like, wow. You go on an adventure with Shang-Chi. <laughs> Wow, that was truly a Canadian whiskey experience. 
And then um, Appa from Kim's Convenience becomes your Appa. <laughs> and it's just a great time. And you just live in Toronto now. Yeah. <laughs> just a good time. I guess we got to get some. Sounds pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to some of these, Japanese whiskey is made from a mash of malted barley that is dried in kilns, fired with a little bit of peat, and distilled in a pot still method. Production of the Japanese whiskey is actually fairly new compared to other ones mm. um it production of whiskey didn't really start until the 1920s mm. and it hasn't actually been exported until the 2000s well that's why your stepbrother went to japan right years and years ago because he was writing his dissertation on whiskey right uh yeah he wrote a dissertation on whiskey like around the world um and one of the places he went to yes was japan japanese whiskey has been gaining more popularity in recent years they've been starting to like win awards and things like that hmm. um so it has been becoming more popular and more prevalent and it's easier to find japanese whiskeys than it used to be have you had it i have yeah i had one that was a fairly popular one it was good i liked it It was really nice and smooth easy to drink hmm. um i think that one was a blended whiskey scotch obviously fun fact about scotch though in scotland it's just called whiskey <laughs> we call it scotch that checks here out. in america <laughs> Um, and yeah, mostly Americans call it scotch. Most other places call it scotch whiskey. Mm -hmm. And then obviously in Scotland, it's whiskey. Sure. Like the Cubanos, it's just a sandwich. Yeah. It's, in Cuba. In Cuba, it's a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So scotch is usually distilled a few times and matured a minimum of three years in oak casks. Irish whiskey is normally distilled three times. Uh, it must be produced in Ireland and aged in wooden casks for no less than three years, which was kind of a common theme that I saw. They like that number three. I that, guess so, yeah. That trinity, they like that. And Irish whiskey used to be the most popular spirit in the world, though it declined dramatically between the late 19th to 20th century. Um, there were only three distilleries left, down from 30. Wow. However, there has been a... Uh, resurgence in popularity since the late 20th century. So Ireland is now back up to, uh, this was as of 2019. Um, so it's been like four years since the stat has changed. So it's probably different now. But as of 2019, Ireland had uh, 25 distilleries in operation and 24 more planned or in active development. Hmm. However, most of those were pretty new and they haven't operated long enough to actually have product that has been aged long enough to sell. Got it. So um, that's all I got. That's all she wrote. Wow. So we're going to try a little sip of whiskey here. And I think I know how this is going to go. <laughs> yeah. But we'll take a little sip and uh, tell us our thoughts. Um, but before we do that, this is not sponsored by this particular whiskey. This is just the one that I have recommended from a friend. Um, hashtag not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored. Uh, we're going to be drinking... So this is a bottle of Old Forester, uh, in particular their 1910 Old Fine Whiskey. Um, it's 93 proof, which is also 46.5% alcohol content, which is on the lower side for mm. alcohol, or for alcohol, on the lower <laughs> side for whiskey. Let's give it a taste. All right. Is that supposed to happen? <laughs> so <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> well, at first I thought it was not too bad. Uh, is it supposed to get stuck back there or am I just, I haven't drank in a lot of water today. We're also, we had a sip of it straight. Right. As so opposed to using, curly. <laughs> as opposed to using ice. Oh, right. <laughs> so it. that's why it was a little more intense probably. It was a little intense, but I kind of liked it. I mean, the color's really pretty. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. I really wish I liked it more because the color is quite pretty and you look very fancy drinking it. Like I'd like I'd like a whiskey on the rocks. Yeah. And the ben -da -da, and you order it from a from a fancy bar and I'm a big manly burly man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was just okay for me. Burned yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I know you're not a whiskey fan. You have some friends that are trying to get you into whiskey. I I am but, trying. I mean, I'll try. I'll try anything once. Yeah. I am trying. Yeah. So I would say this is on the smoother side of whiskeys. Um, it was smooth. 
Yeah. Until it got caught in my throat. <laughs> I've had some that are uh, really, really intense. Um, this is also, I would say, I'm by no means a whiskey expert, expert, so I can't tell you all the notes and things like that. Um, it tastes like whiskey, <laughs> yep. but like a good whiskey. Um, it slightly reminds me of Honey Jack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, Honey Jack is one of those like blended whiskeys because they have flavorings and stuff in that whiskey. Yeah, I don't hate that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. <laughs> it's That's a really easy one to drink because it's flavored with honey and stuff. So, But no, this is a, I would say it's definitely on the sweeter side, like kind of caramely maybe. So for the notes on the official Old Forester 1910 website, it says the aroma is interlaced layers of buttercream, sticky toffee, cedar, and apricot. On the taste, it is smooth, well-rounded mingling of sweet oatmeal raisin cookies and milk cho- chocolate. False. Leading into caramel corn and evolving spice. Okay. So that might be some of the, you know, where it was hitting you back there. And then it finishes with a charred oak that leads into a clean perif- peripheral spice. False. Did you get all that? I don't get cookies. I don't get no cookies? butterscotch. I don't get... Man, they're kind of like wine vintners right i mean (laughs) now i will say i feel like i feel like wine for me is a little easier to identify those flavors i mean i did study wine a little bit in school Mm. uh but i do feel like it's easier to pick out those flavors if if it's like really fruit forward it's like hey i got that if it's really you know buttery or oaky it's like hey i get that but i feel like with whiskey he's wafting it by the way (laughs) you know you can't see him he's literally wafting it I think you you're chemistry. supposed to do it like this. Okay. Well, it looks like you're in Chem Lab One. You know, it's <laughs> funny when I do the wafting. I don't. When I just smell it, I do kind of get the stuck sticky toffee. When I do the wafting thing, it does actually smell a little bit like cedar. Let me see. I think you're full of it. <laughs> you got to get it further away from you, and waft it to you. There you go. No, I'm sorry. I don't I don't get that. But I feel like just sniffing it, I feel like you can kind of smell something sweeter. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what they're saying the toffee is. The toffee and the buttercream and apricot. Yeah, I think they're no. just saying it's like kind of <laughs> I think they're just saying like it's it's kind of a, a sweeter smell to it. Unlike something like Lagavulin, which is very smoky and peaty. Log of what? Lagavulin. Oh. Um, that is a pretty intensely like smoky whiskey um and i've never actually had any i've only heard of it because of parks and rec oh is that the nick opperman one yeah that's the one that he drank i almost called him nick oppenheimer (laughs) nick (laughs) opperman yeah so do you think it tastes like apricots and cookies no that would it's going to be a very very smoky whiskey okay well then what's my motivation (laughs) (laughs) i'm just kidding do you want me to rate it? Do I rate it? Yeah, go for it. On like whiskeys or like how much I like it? <laughs> uh, I don't know that we have to do like a 10 scale. Just like what What are your thoughts? Do you enjoy it? Do you not enjoy it? It's all right. As far as whiskeys. It's all right. It's, it's it all right. I... It's all right. I. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy it. I think it's pretty good. Um, I, I tend to prefer the sweeter ones. I haven't quite dipped my toes into smokier whiskeys they scare me a little bit if i'm being honest we tried a smoky tequila recently yeah i've had um mezcal and i do like mezcal actually i think mezcal is pretty good mezcal um that does take some getting used to so maybe getting into mezcal will also help me get more into like the heavier and smokier whiskeys i think that about wraps it up Uh, So thanks, everyone, and uh, I am really sorry that this is another short episode, but we will hopefully be back next week with a full one and continuing the season. Yeah, just think of this as a spooky Halloween. (laughs) This was a trick and not a treat. Ooh, spooky Halloween. (laughs) Yeah, actually, I think this is going to come out um, on Halloween, so I hope everyone has a good Halloween for those that are celebrating. Woohoo, have fun, be safe. Wear your coats and jackets. It's cold. (laughs) And we will see everyone next week. So thank you for listening. Bye.